Hey guys, Webberly here. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to the channel. Um, today I'm going to be teaching you all how to create your own URL shortener similar to Bitly or Hourly or Shorty. Pretty much all the E's. Um, we're going to be doing it entirely in PHP, at least for the first half of uh, this series. Basically, the first half is just going to be PHP and database design, the actual functionality of the website. Um, then what we're going to be doing is we'll be integrating some Ajax functionality so that it all works seamlessly. Uh, so when the user clicks a button, for example, it happens on page instead of refreshing the page over and over again. Uh, we'll then be going into C CSS if this uh, series does well, so I can teach you all how to make a modern looking design for um, the URL shortener, so you can hopefully take that into any of your future websites that you're developing. Uh, yeah, so let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is open up my file explorer. I'm going to go into my local disk, uh, my XAMPP file. Now if you don't have XAMPP, you need to make sure you get it in order for your PHP to work and in order for you to be able to access PHP my admin. There are others that you can use such as MAMP or WAMP, but uh, as far as I'm aware MAMP, actually no, WAMP is only available on Windows and MAMP is available on both similar to XAMPP. But yeah, you can get any of those. I prefer XAM because of the um, how easy it is to set up, but it's really up to you. So I'm going to create a new folder uh, within my HT docs. I'm just going to call this SURL for shortened URL. Um, I'm not going to do anything else with that, um, but I'm going to go ahead and open up a new win uh, Chrome window. I'm then going to go to my PHP my admin. I'm going to create a new database, and I'm just going to call this SURL. You can call this whatever you want, just make sure you remember what you called it for future reference when uh, you're referencing it in PHP. I'm going to change the number of columns to 3, uh, and I'm just going to give it the name links. I'm then going to give uh, the first column a name of ID, which will have a length or value of uh, 11 characters. It's just going to remain an integer. The second column I'm going to call unique ID. There's going to be a varchar of seven uh, characters and the final one will be uh, the URL. This will also be a varchar with a length of 90. Now the reason I've chosen 90 is because I've done some research and as far as I'm aware that is the longest possible URL that can be input. You can put more just to be on the safe side but I find it a little bit pointless to do so so I've just selected 90. So we're going to go ahead and save that. And now we got we have a new database uh, along with some a table with uh, links, and that's that done. So now we're going to go into uh, our editor. I've got Sublime Text. You can have whatever you want. It's all the same to me. Um, going to go into HT Docs and select the file that I had beforehand and open it. I'm going to go ahead and create a new file with it. And I'm just going to call it index.php. Now this is the landing uh, page that the user will uh, first visit when they visit the website. Index.php is always that. Um, <clears throat> uh, I've gone ahead and already laid out the uh, HTML document. If you didn't know how I did that so quickly, uh, if you have Sublime Text, all you need to do is uh, type in HTML in the tab and it will automatically pop up with uh, the HTML uh, layout I suppose. Um, we're going to go ahead and set up the PHP just quickly, so the PDO, uh, oh yeah, for those of you who don't know, I am using PDO in this series, I might, may or may not put in the title, I might forget, don't blame me, but yes, we will be using PDO for this. If you're good enough, you may be able to convert it to MySQL uh, I, but if, if you can do that, I don't know why you're on this tutorial, you probably already know how to do all this, but yeah, let's keep going. So we're going to set up the connection, uh, we're going to make a try statement, and we're just going to put in, uh, create a new variable called PDO, it's a MySQL database, our host is a local host, you may need to change this depending on whether or not it's on your website. Uh, the DB name that we chose was SURL. Remember how I said you need to remember the name? Well, this is uh, why SURL. Then my username is root and my password is nothing. Uh, that's how it is for most uh, local hosts, but yours might be different, so make sure you remember uh, what yours is. I'm going to create a uh, catch and we're just going to be PDO exception with the variable E. Whoops. 
And then we're just gonna die. Uh, I don't know. There was an error. And then we'll just append on the error. Uh, get message. Now, if you're experienced with PDO, uh, yours might look different to this depending on how you like to do it. But this is how I like to do it normally. Oh, I forgot what that needs that. <clears throat> uh, so basically, it'll try and create the uh, PDO connection. If it fails, it'll uh, die and output an error to the user. I've tried to make it a little bit more user friendly by saying there was an error, but you don't really need that. You can just have uh, the get message uh, method. I'm going to go ahead and give it a title of SURL. We will be adding more stuff in the head, such as CSS, but this will be later on in the series, so we don't really need to worry about it for now. I'm going to go ahead and create a form, give it an action of just an empty string, which means whenever the form is submitted, it'll go straight back to this page instead of going somewhere else. Um, we can then go give it a method of post. I'm going to put two inputs in here. First one is going to be a type of text, and this one's going to have a name of URL, and we can just put a placeholder here, uh, your URL here. We're going to put another input. This time it's going to be a type of submit. You can put a button if you want, but it doesn't really matter. So the name is going to be uh, SURL, and the value is going to be shorten. Cool, so now we've got our form set up, it's time to actually create the uh, PHP script or functionality of the URL shortener. Uh, well, I'm sorry if you guys can hear the mechanical keyboard in the background, I, I'll try and fix that in post-processing edit, uh, post editing, but yeah, um, I'm really sorry about that if it's a bit too loud for you. Uh, if it is, be sure to comment and I'll try and uh, make a fix for that, but yeah, let's keep going. So we're going to create an if statement, we're going to check if um, our button has been pressed, so if is set post SURL, so this means if our form has been submitted, we'll go ahead and set, uh, set URL, so the URL variable to their URL, so there's a name, so we'll say post URL, we're then going to go ahead and check if uh, this URL is empty, so if empty, sorry, if empty trim, we'll sign underscore post, uh, your, actually, we can just do URL. So this basically means if it's just white space or if it's completely empty, then there, then we can output an error pretty much. So we'll output the error, uh, you must enter a valid URL. But if it's not white space, we can go ahead and check if it is a valid URL. So uh, we can say filter var, and then we can pass our URL. And we can say filter underscore validate underscore URL. So this will basically check if the URL is valid, if it contains .com, if it has a HTTP sign, all that sort of stuff. Uh, if it doesn't, so if it doesn't, We'll say uh, you must enter a valid URL. Actually, I have a better idea. What we can say is if empty, or we just go ahead and copy this into here. So now we don't have two if statements unnecessarily. Um, I'm then going to create a go to. Uh, so the way you do that is you do it, you cr uh, create a name and then you just put a colon after it, simple as that. Uh, basically what this is going to be is it's going to be a check to see if uh, the uni unique ID that we put in the database already exists and if it does we're just going to um, keep running through until we have a unique ID that doesn't exist so that we can then go ahead and put it into the database. So the way we do that is we go ahead and say UID is equal to, and then we generate a, a unique ID, and then we're going to create a, um, a prepared statement. So the way we do that is we say prepare, and we're just going to put our SQL in here, which is select all from links where 
unique ID is equal to question mark. Then we say check, execute, and then we pass an array with the value of unique ID, which is this question mark. If you don't know how to do prepared statements, I'll leave a link in the description for you can so you can all go and check out how to do that. But I'll leave that for another episode if you really need me to. Uh, just in here, we'll just put our UID. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say if check row count go to check. So basically what this whole thing is doing is it's checking if the ID has already been set in the database. Um, basically the way that it does that is uh, it selects all uh, the rows from the database with uh, the UID or the unique ID of whatever gen whatever's generated here. Um, once it's done that, is it checks if there's a count of them. So if there is, it will return true, and it will just keep looping through until it returns false. Uh, it won't execute anything that's down here, uh, so that's why I use the go to check. Um, another thing we need to do is we need to check if the URL already exists. Now this isn't required, you can uh, do this, you can leave this bit out, but I feel like it's it's pretty necessary if you want to save database space, uh, especially if you're on a limited um, hosting plan, but it's really up to you whether or not you keep this. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another variable check, and it's just basically going to be the same as the prepared statement above. So prepare. And all we're going to do is select unique ID and the URL from links where URL is equal to question mark. And we're just going to say, except we're going to change this to URL. Awesome. Now we're going to say if check row count. So once again, if uh, there is a result for this, so if it does, if uh, that URL is already in the database, all we're going to do is we're going to set UID equal to check fetch uh, PDO fetch underscore. Sorry, that needs to be capitals. Fetch underscore OBJ. So it's going to fetch an object instead of an uh, associative array like it normally would. So basically, what that means instead of saying echo uh, row A, you'd say echo row A. It's fairly straightforward. Uh, it's completely up to you how you do this, but this is just how I want to do it. And we're grabbing the uh, column unique ID. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to echo out um, this URL has already been shortened and then we're just going to display the URL so for this it's just going to be localhost slash cell SURL sorry I question mark now the reason we have I here is because um, that's going to be the file name of uh, uh, the file name where we grab all these shortened URLs and redirect the user. We're going to be related to getting rid of this I so it can just be uh, the random, let randomly generated string. But for now, we're just going to leave it as I, and for, then we're just going to append on the UID and slash A, and then we're just going to copy this real quick so I don't have to go through it. Oops. Awesome. Now, if it doesn't have a row count, so if this URL doesn't exist and nobody's shortened it before, what we're going to do is we're going to quickly create another prepared statement or query. Uh, prepare. And our SQL is going to be insert into links. Then we're just going to say unique ID and URL with the values of question mark and question mark. Then we're going to say if statement execute 
array then uh, we put UID and URL then we can go ahead and say e echo your URL and we can put an ahref whoops I'm gonna put this in single quotes just to make it easier on us your URL um, your, sorry has already sorry has been converted into and we'll just uh, break to a new line that will say a href um, uh, we can go ahead and copy this bit just up here so we can say localhost So like that, and we'll do the same just here. Simple as that. So that's our whole uh, shorten URL function. Um, we will be later turning this into a class instead of just having it in the uh, script, like in the same page just here, just so it looks neater and it's easier to see and read and all that sort of stuff. So let's go ahead and see if there's any errors that we need to fix. So we'll go to SURL. So as you can see, we have our form just here. If we put in an invalid URL such as this, it'll say you must enter a valid URL. Put in a proper one such as www.google.com and click shorten. Uh, catchable fatal error it could not be further into string on line 29. So let's see where we went, went wrong here. Uh, check, execute. Uh, oh right, my message just went off. <laughs> so we, I forgot to create the function uh, to get a, uh, to create a random string. Uh, that's gonna keep going off. God damn it! <laughs> Sorry, just ignore that, guys. Uh, so we're gonna create a new variable called chars. Now I will leave a paste bin in the description so you guys can go ahead and copy this down instead of having to write it all out but I'll quickly speed this up so you uh, don't have to you know wait for me to do this I'm just gonna be typing out all the characters on the keyboard awesome so now that we've done that we can create a variable called chars len which is a string length of chars we're gonna set the string equal to an empty string and create a for loop uh, with the variable i equal to zero i is less than seven i increments every one every time and we say string dot equals so depending on chars uh, rand zero chars len negative one and we're just going to return the string and we're just going to say is equal to string sorry string so if we go ahead and refresh this click continue uh, unexpected expecting on line 13 ah these need to be dollar signs so getting used to javascript here click that yep as you can see the URL has been converted into that now eventually we're going to make the functionality so that when you click on this URL it'll take you to google.com and if we go ahead and look at a table with links you'll see that this corresponds with that so if we uh, check jkf0lf1 uh, jkf0fl1 whatever it is uh, so yeah, hope this tutorial was useful to you guys. Uh, I will be creating another part to this series so that uh, we can redirect all the users and then uh, implement Ajax and eventually CSS if you guys really want that. Uh, but so far, I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial, found it helpful. I'll see you in the next one.